In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, C-A-G-R. This is the formula we're going to use. Now, you could use this formula to measure investment returns, GDP growth, sales growth, if you have a company's past income statements. But in this video, I'm going to do an example with investment returns. So let's say we're trying to calculate the compound annual growth rate of an investment. In the numerator here, we have the ending value. So that's at the end of all the years or months or quarters. This is the ending value of that investment. We're going to divide that by the beginning value of the investment. And then we're going to raise this number that we calculate here. We're going to raise that to the 1 divided by t power. Okay, And t is the number of periods between when the ending value and the beginning value occur. And then we're going to take this whole thing and subtract 1. Then we're going to get a number. We're going to convert that to a percentage. So let's do an example. I've got some uh, numbers I made up here. Let's assume that you invested $5,000 at the end of 2016. So you invested at the end of 2016, so there's no growth that happens in 2016 because you invest at the end of the year in this example. But then I'm going to assume that in 2017, uh, your investment grows by 19.42%. So then it has a value of 5,971 at the end of 2017. And then it declines by 6.24% in 2018, etc. So I've got growth rates here are for each specific year. So this is the growth rate. This is what happens to the investment in 2017, 2018, and so forth. Okay. So we've got from the end of 2016 to the end of 2024. So there's eight, uh, there's eight years of difference between when the investment was made and at the end with the final value. Okay. So you invested 5,000 and then at the at eight years later, you see that you have $13,136 and you have all these different returns for each year. But then the question is, what is the compound annual growth rate? And we're going to calculate it using the formula that I showed you. So we again, we take our ending value divided by the beginning value. So the ending value, so at, the, at, at 2024, end of 2024, we have 13136 So that's going to go in our numerator. Then at the very beginning, we had 5,000. So that's going to go in the denominator. And then we're going to raise to the 1 divided by t power. Now, so there were 8, it was 8 years, basically. It was, so 8 number of periods. is the 8 is the number of periods. So 1 divided by 8, or the 0 0.125 power, right? That's what we're going to raise this, uh, this amount to. And then we're going to subtract 1. So the number we get is 0 0.1283. And I've rounded that, uh, but we want to convert that to a percentage. So 0 0.1283, when expressed as a percentage, is 12.83%. So that is the compound annual growth rate. Like so, so we put 5,000 in, eight periods later, we have $13,136. So we had a compound annual growth rate of 12.83%. So what does that mean? That means, here's another way of thinking about it. If you say, okay, I'll take $5,000. I invest it, and then I'm going to get a return 1 plus 0 0.1283, and then this to the eighth power. Okay, so this will give you this amount. It's, it's off by a couple dollars due to rounding. I did the analysis in Excel, uh, but uh, this this is this is basically what's happening here. The compound annual growth rate. So it's in like every year. Now, obviously, not every year was there actually a return of 12.83 percent, but it's saying over time this is the compounded annual growth rate. Now, you might have been wondering, hey, why don't we just take all these percentages here? Why don't we? So like this this was the the return for 2017. This was the return for 2018, 2019. So why don't we just take them all and add them up? and divide it by eight to get the average annual return. Well, you could do that, but if you do that, it's going to ignore the effects of compounding, okay? I'm gonna show why that'll be a problem in a second, uh, but basically if you did do that, if you took the average of all those, you would have had an average annual return of 14.16%. Okay, now that is actually called, if you're interested, that's called the arithmetic mean, where you just add up all the, the, the annual returns so you just say, okay, 19.42 plus negative 6.24 plus 28.88, et cetera. You add up all those and divide by eight because there were eight uh, growth rates. That's the arithmetic mean, okay? So 
the arithmetic mean is, is so they're never going to have where the compounded annual growth rate is, is higher than the arithmetic mean. It'll be less than or equal to it. Because the compound annual growth rate is actually something called the geometric mean. Uh, so again, I don't want to get too wordy here with you. Let me show you why this matters. Is if you're thinking, well, who cares? Why does it matter? Why don't we just average the growth rates? Well, here's a simple example. Let's say at the end of 2022, you invested $100,000. And let's say that you lose 30% on that investment uh, the very first year, 2023, you lose 30%. So now you're at 70,000, right? Because 30% of 100,000 is 30,000. You have $30,000 loss. You went from 100,000 to 70,000, okay? Now, in 2024, your fortunes turn around. You have a 30% increase in your investment. Now, if you just took the average annual return, you say, well, look, I had a negative 30% return the first year, positive 30% return the second year. So just add those up. That adds up to zero. They cancel out. Divide that by two. Any, you take zero divided by anything, you're going to get zero. So you basically said, well, I, my average return was zero. But the compound annual growth rate is going to tell is, is more effective because actually and again here's the this is the same formula as before you take the ending value 91,000 divided by the beginning value and then you raise it one divided by t and there were, there were two years passed between the end of 22 and the end of 2024 so you divide by one to uh over two okay and then of course subtract one you get to a negative 4.61 percent now this makes more sense and you say why well if you say well hey this average annual return is zero percent that Look, you start with 100,000, now you've got 91,000. So you lost money. You lost money. And the compound annual growth rate captures that because it's negative here. It captures it. So if you're wondering, hey, this doesn't make sense, I don't understand. Why would I have a 30% loss and then the very next year have a 30% gain? Why don't I end up back at 100,000? Why, why didn't I break even? And the reason is when you when you incur that loss, so so basically you incurred this loss first, and then now you have the 30% gain later. The 30% gain is being calculated off of a smaller base, right? So you lost money. So then when you have the 30% gain, it's 30% off of 70,000, not 30% off 100,000. So the amount of the principal declined. The amount you had invested declined. So you only have a $21,000 increase, $70,000 and $91,000 uh, in that second year. So basically, when you as an investor incur a loss, it's going to take a higher percentage gain than that loss to get back to even. So you lose 30% and you say, oh, well, maybe next year it'll go up. My investments will go up 30%. You're not even. You've still lost money. So you're going to need a return higher than 30%. Uh, to get back to even. Now, I will show you. Uh, I've I've got an Excel file I made with the with the examples here, uh, and so just kind of showing you what I did. And then I also put together just a little basic calculator. So if you wanted to say, okay, I've got an investment and I put in twenty thousand, and then later the the ending value, a few years later is eighty five thousand. How many years later? Ah, uh, let's say let's say four. And you say, okay, you have a compound annual growth rate of 43.58%. So I'm going to uh, post or share this uh, Excel spreadsheet on uh, my Patreon, uh, YouTube community, uh, with, with my email uh, list, which you can sign up for in the uh, description section. So I, I hope you found this video helpful and see why the compound annual growth rate is more helpful than the annual growth rate, uh, particularly when it comes to evaluating the return on investments.